Welcome to episode 14, and in this one, we're actually going to be looking at a little bit of more CSS3 properties, and then we're going to go into uh, creating a very nice little button that is really going to be quite nice. And uh, so let's just go ahead and get started here. So all I really have is a page with a div on it, and that div just has a width, a height, and a border so we can actually see it if we go ahead and preview this here and the first thing I want to do is show you a new type of color selection which is called uh, RGB and it's new in CSS3 and basically and uh, here's the button we'll be creating later and I'll show you that in just a second but basically if just say we're picking a color here uh, like I mentioned before we have the hex code down here but we can also enter in the R, G, and B color information as well. Now there really is no significance to it by itself. Uh, you know, it's not going to be a more precise color or anything. Both of the values are going to change at the same rate and we're going to come out with the same color. The only difference is that CSS3 also supports RGBA which is red green blue alpha and alpha basically just means opacity so if just say you're setting the opacity of any layer you can now do that in CSS which is kind of cool so I'm gonna give this div a, a background color just to show you how this works and if just say I set this to black the first thing I can do is just set the opacity by itself so uh, 0.5 means 50% opacity. You just have to translate from percent into decimal. And uh, you'll see it started out black and now it's uh, it's just this gray color. And you can see that the border, uh, it was black and now it's also this gray color. And any text that we would have inside would be this gray color as well because the entire element now has the opacity of 0.5. If just say there's only one aspect of that attribute that we want to change, we use RGBA. So I can type this in here and then we're going to use two parentheses and in there we're going to type in our value. So I happen to know that 0, 0, and 0 is uh, black, uh, 255, 255, 255 is white just for reference. And the uh, last one I'm going to put in here is the alpha. So if I were to type in 0.5 again, or 50% opacity, you could see that we still see the border here. I'm not sure if you can see it on the screen capture, but uh, the border is indeed black and the background is gray. This is quite helpful if there's something underneath it. So for example, if I were to go into my body here and set the background color to red, you could see that now, uh, it's not just gray because it's mixing with the background color to create this kind of dark gray color. So that's really great when you know there's more than one thing on top of each other. You'll definitely find a use for it somewhere and I will be showing you one in this episode when we do go ahead and create that button. So I'm just going to come back here to just having this outline and the next thing I want to show you is gradients and gradients are pretty cool because they let you just do exactly that dynamically create a gradient right in CSS without having to use a photo editing tool to get a little piece of a gradient and then repeat it so that you get that effect so basically all we have to do here is start out with a background image now I'm not going to go that into uh, gradients only because they are just so incredibly complex and there are so many different things that you can do with it that it's kind of insane and for me to go over every single option in this one video it would take absolutely hours to do so I will be including some reference material in the description for anyone that really wants to go ahead and learn more about gradients however you're not going to need to know that much about them if you're just starting web design. However, if you are pretty advanced, then I would definitely recommend checking out those materials. 
So the first thing we can do is set a linear gradient. And uh, CSS3 supports linear and radial gradients. And I'm going to be using the WebKit syntax because I'm previewing with Safari. You can do the same if you're previewing with Chrome. And if in Firefox, you would use dash MOZ. So I'm just going to say dash uh, WebKit here, another dash, and then I'm going to type linear gradient. And then I'm going to use two parentheses. And inside those parentheses, we can just put the value. So if this is just a, a top to bottom gradient, so I could say red, blue. And if I go ahead and preview this, it starts off at red and then comes down to blue at the bottom. You'll notice that the rendering engine for gradients is a little bit different than how Photoshop and some other applications do it. Now we can include even more in here. So I could say red, blue, green and we get from red to blue to green. The other thing we can do is we could set the angle for this gradient. So I'll just keep it at two colors just so you can see it a little simpler. And uh, this actually goes before our colors. So we can type in something like left, red, blue. And now you can see it's starting on the left and then the blue is on the opposite side here or the right. Uh, and any directional works for there, left, top, right, bottom. Uh, you can also set things like an angle. So for example, in Photoshop, I know you can set an actual angle, you know, from zero to 360 degrees, and you can just put that in very easily. So we can type 185 deg, or f four degrees. And uh, it's kind of hard to see here, but it's actually starting out uh, about here and it's coming down here. I'll try to find one with more of an, uh, a major difference here. So maybe if I type in 60 degrees, you can see it a little bit better. There we go. You can see it's kind of on an angle here. It's kind of going diagonally. So you can just play around with that until you get the right effect. And that's pretty much it for linear gradients. The other one is a radial gradient. And this pretty much works the exact same way. We can just type in red, blue, and we get that effect there. That's pretty much all there is. So as you can see, gradients are kind of simple. Uh, if you want to know about the other formats, uh, that's kind of a different story. So I would definitely recommend using Prefixer. Uh, again, I don't really have time to go over every single format, but the really uh, not, you don't need to understand all of them when you have an excellent tool like this. So uh, if I were to type in WebKit linear gradient red blue prefix size, uh, what I do here? Oh, let me just put in this background image. There we go. And uh, you can see down here all the way at the bottom. The official syntax for this is exactly the same, and pretty much the others are as well. Uh, Microsoft, Opera, Mozilla, they're all the exact same. However, uh, legacy versions of Safari are definitely not. Uh, Prefixer uh, seems like it just did a little bit of a hiccup here. This actually should be top, I mean, uh, two red. Um, but you're most likely not going to have to use this legacy version of, uh, of WebKit because most people have switched to Safari 5.1 already. However, if you do want to include older versions of Safari and Chrome, uh, you can just throw that in as well. So again, just make sure you, you if you uh, ever need anything for linear gradients, you can just take check out Prefixer and it'll generate the other versions for you and again more reference material is in the description. So now let's get on to what this uh, tutorial is really about and creating this little nifty button here and I thought this was quite a nice example to uh, give in this tutorial here and it's just uh, made with some basic effects really. We have, I'll just pull this up a very subtle drop shadow here. I'm not sure if you can see that difference on the screen grab. Uh, we have an, a nice inner glow. 
which gives it a, a more popped effect. We have a gradient, obviously, and then a stroke. So we can just pretty much go through and do each of these one by one. So the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of this div and actually use a button that is a valid element. And uh, I'll type button as it is in the preview. And the first thing I'm going to do is set the font family to uh, Helvetica as it is. I won't worry about font stacks right now because uh, it's just an example and it's going to be bold and it's going to be 13 pixels okay go ahead and preview that we get the basic button and so uh, the first thing we want to do is I'm going to set the padding and if you notice the padding is much greater on the left and right sides than on the top so I'm just going to estimate this so I'll just say uh, maybe six pixels 13 pixels see how that looks uh... that looks about okay let me just make, make this a little bit more and then i will adjust that as necessary as we do the other parts of this uh... the next thing is it is a pill button and what that means is that the corners are rounded so far that it actually makes it look like a semicircle. So to replicate that effect, all we really have to do is put in some crazy value, like 100 pixels. Obviously, that's way too high, but we will still get the pill effect here. Uh, and the only reason why we see kind of some weird uh, effects going on is because of how a button looks by default. Don't worry about those. They will be overwritten by the effects that we write. I'm actually going to increase the padding right here. Uh, we'll deal with some colors first. Uh, the color of the text is going to be that. Okay. And uh, you always want to include, even when you're doing a background gradient, you always want to have a background color just included as well. It's good practice to have it uh, just in case some browser doesn't support gradients entirely at least they'll at least see a background color so I'm using digital color meter here I'll just switch this over to hex value and grab this color so we give this a background color okay uh, we'll do the background gradient in just a second next thing I want to do is set the border on this so I have this in my stroke palette. So we're going to say border one pixel solid that. And we get the border there. Uh, the next thing is that there is a slight drop shadow. I'm not sure if you notice it on the text itself, which uh, kind of gives it more of an embossed effect here. So I'll take the color of that. And you can see it's just one pixel on a 90 degree angle. So uh, we can just type that in as 0, 1 pixels, 0, and then the color. We get that effect there. Again, I'm not sure if you can see it because it's kind of subtle. And uh, the next thing I want to do is actually first I'm going to decrease this padding and increase this one kind of just shaping it the way I want it uh, and let's go ahead and do that gradient now open up my gradient overlay panel and uh, I'll start by taking the first color here copy that go into here and I'll say background image webkit linear gradient I'm just going to do the webkit uh, syntax for now since I'm only previewing in Safari uh, obviously if I was using this on a production website I would go ahead and use something like prefixer to get all the different formats for me if we preview that we get that nice effect there uh, and I just realized uh, nope that's good uh, it's a little heavy though when it comes out here it looks like so uh, 
what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to do just a little bit of adjusting here. And I'll copy this and put this into Color Picker just because I don't feel like going back into Photoshop. And I think I'm just going to soften up the color a little bit and change it. And then we get sort of just a, uh, a lighter button there. And I like that a little bit better than what I originally had. And the next thing to do is to include that uh, inner glow. So to do that, we actually use a shadow. Uh, so I'll start out with uh, WebKit box shadow. And instead of putting in the values first, I'm actually going to put inset. And uh, inset is really handy because it basically does exactly that and creates an inset shadow. And I'm going to make this uh, zero, 00 so that it doesn't really go anywhere. And maybe, uh, well, let me check out my glow here, inner glow. And it's uh, four pixels from the edge. So if I were to type in four pixel white, let me just see how this looks here. And that's, uh, yep, that's it. And the last thing is the drop shadow. Uh, so you can see we have an opacity set here. So we will go ahead and put that in. So uh, let me just call in here. We're going to use another box shadow. And to do that, we can just type a comma and just put however many we want. And this is not going to be inset, so we don't have to type that. It is going to be offset by uh, one pixel on the top. You can see it's one pixel and it's a 90 degree angle. So zero, one pixel. Uh, then it is blurred five pixels. It is black and it's 25% opacity. So I'll actually uh, make this an RGB A and say, zero 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 point two five and if we preview that we get that nice very subtle shadow there we go so it looks pretty much just like this button uh, the padding is still a little bit off but if I really wanted to I can go ahead and keep adjusting it until I get what I want but that's basically how you can make a very simple nice looking button using only CSS3 and no images whatsoever